Hi everyone. Today I'm going to take you through the case study of Crocs. This case discusses the astounding growth of Crocs, a manufacturer of plastic shoes from 2003 through early 2007. Much of the company's growth was made possibly by a high flexible supply chain that enabled Crocs to build additional product within the selling season. So now before moving to this case study, I would request you to subscribe 5 minutes learning channel in YouTube in order to get my recent case study video updates on time. Also this video is enabled with English subtitles for your better understanding. Now let's move to the case study. The footwear industry was oriented around two seasons spring and fall. The standard practice was footwear companies preparing for the upcoming fall season to take their product to shows around the world in January. Buyers would book orders for fall delivery following these shows. The fall orders that were received at the beginning of the year would be planned for delivery in August, September, October and November. These scheduled shipments would drive the production plan. The manufacturers would add some access to the build, typically about 20% of the pre-book orders, to take advantage of potential additional orders. A very aggressive company might add 50% to the build, but all the product would be manufactured before the season began. Most shoes were produced in Asia, primarily in China and Vietnam, with some manufactured in South America. This production and supply model had obvious limitations. Retailers had to estimate what their customers would want well in advance of the selling season. If they underestimated, they would have empty shelves and forego potential sales. If they have overestimated, they would be stuck with unsold stock at the end of the season and be forced to have clearance sale in order to get rid of these excess stock at discounted price. Making this even more difficult was the consideration that fashion was subject to trends that were difficult to predict. History was of only limited value, particularly with new products that incorporated novel design elements that might either become wildly popular or fall flat. Crocs looked at the supply chain from a very different perspective than traditional shoe companies. They decided to develop a model focused on customer needs. When a customer needed more product, they would get it. Under the Crocs model, retailers would not need to take a big risk in January by placing large orders for their fall season. They could place smaller pre-booked orders and order more when they saw how well the product sold. Crocs wanted customers to be able to get more of a product during the season in order to take advantage of unexpectedly high demand. To do that, Crocs would have to be able to make the products during the season and ship them to customers quickly. The positive relationship that Crocs developed with its retailers resulted in additional benefits. As Crocs became important to big retailers, they approached Crocs to suggest increasing the Crocs presence. One of the first move was buying the manufacturer of Crocs shoes Foam Creations in June 2004 so that it could own the proprietary Crosslight resin which is used to make the shoe and control manufacturing. At that point, Crocs purchased the raw material pellets from a variety of companies in Europe and the United States and shipped them to a third-party compounding company in Italy. The Italian company had been part of foam creations and had previously done the compounding, so continuing to use them for this function avoided supply chain interruptions. The compounded colorized pellets were then shipped to foam creations in Canada, where shoes were molded and assembled. The finished products were then shipped to a third-party distribution company in Denver that warehoused the shoes and packaged 
and ship them to the customers. Crocs also started production in China in the early 2005 using a large contract manufacturer. The raw material was still being sent to Italy for compounding, but the compounded pellets were now sent to both Canada and China as well. The shoes that were made in China were shipped to Denver warehouse for packaging orders and distribution. Crocs began to enter the Asian and European markets in the spring of 2005. As described earlier, the company's strategy was to launch worldwide, so it brought on manufacturing capacity to support this approach. It added a capacity through contract manufacturer in Florida, Mexico, and Italy. Coming from the contract manufacturing business background, CEO Snyder and his team expected that the benefits of contract manufacturing they had experienced in the electronic industries would also be present in this new business. Electronics contract manufacturer in all parts of the world were highly responsive to customers' demand and quick to increase or stop production as required. They soon found that this was not the case with footwear manufacturing. When CEO Mr. Snyder realized that contract manufacturers outside of Asia would not be able to adopt the company's supply chain model, he developed company-owned manufacturing operations in Mexico and Italy. Croc set up a manufacturing operations in Brazil that was scheduled to be opened by the end of June 2007. It was also exploring potential manufacturing sites in India as well. Crocs had used a contract manufacturer in Romania to serve European customers and considered several options to replace the contractor, including buying the contractor or setting up a new facility in Romania. They were also approached by a company in Bosnia that seemed to understand the Crocs model. The two company comes to an agreement whereby Croc owns the molding equipment and molds using the contract company's personnel for labor. If this approach did not meet Croc's requirement of flexibility and rapid responsiveness, it would obviously move to an entirely company-owned manufacturing facility. The Chinese contract manufacturer, who could meet Croc's need for flexibility and responsiveness, was maintained as such. Croc's also kept the Florida contract manufacturer, which was the only manufacturer who was making high-volume product and could ship with a made in USA label and continue to manufacture in Canada. While manufacturing in each geographic region added both capacity and the ability to respond to a local customers, having the compounding done in Italy led to a supply chain inefficiencies. Compounded material had to be sent from Italy to each production site in the con correct amount and color. This resulted not only inefficient shipping of materials around the world, but also reduced manufacturing flexibility in each locations, since they could only process the colors that they had in stock. The raw material were inexpensive, so centralizing compounding did not result in significant savings through the inventory consolidation. In 2006, Crocs took control of the compounding activity, creating state-of-the-art compounding facilities in Canada, China, and Mexico. Crocs could now ship raw materials to each of these plants. These plants could compound material as and when needed for production, delaying the colorizing decision until a specific color product was needed. Moving compounding in-house also provided IP protection for the Crosslight compound. Crocs also changed its warehousing model. The company had used a contract warehousing and distribution firm in Colorado to handle all its shipments. All production came to the contractor's Colorado warehouse in bulk, where every shoe was removed and labeled then warehoused. Customers order were then filled from this central warehouse. This arrangement was inefficient because 
bulk orders from large customers could have been shipped directly from the factory to the customers if warehousing and distribution had been located near factory to address these problems the company added warehousing operations to each factory including labeling and other value added activities such as installing hand tags and putting products into bags or boxes for customers that ordered large quantities the order could be shipped directly from these chinese warehouses the chinese warehouses was owned by one of the croc suppliers but run by crocs personnel and croc systems other warehouses were owned by crocs or were being transitioned to crocs ownership the intent was for crocs to control order fulfillment activities in asia crocs had a similar experience with warehousing contractor as it had with contract manufacturers the company had tried to using a number of third party warehouses in the us and elsewhere crocs found that these companies did a good job for a short time but soon lost interest so they came up with the same model for warehouse as well crocs early sales were to small retailers these stores were willing to take more risk than the large chains and work with a new rapidly growing supplier particularly one that provided a high level of support and rapid shipments of product small stores were willing to work with crocs through problems such as stockouts and shipment delays large retailers generally imposed financial penalties for such problems crocs saw the small retailers as important to building the brand and providing a brand presence even after the majority of sales went to large retailers after crocs initial success in small stores large retailers approached the company since the large retailers had seen the market acceptance of the croc shoes crocs was in much stronger negotiating position than it would have been earlier in its development it could negotiate favorable terms then by mid 2007 about 75% of revenue came from large retailers split approximately evenly between shoe stores department stores and sporting goods stores the rest of the revenue came from a large number of small shops representing many different segments these small shops accounted for a much larger percentage of orders than the large retailers requiring a different approach to distribution to meet the needs of small customers product would be shipped to the company owned warehouse in colorado where the orders were configured and shipped while these stores might send orders to crocs by fax for small quantities to be delivered directly to their stores the large retailers had an entirely different fulfillment model these companies had their own distribution centers and sent orders electronically their orders were packed and shipped from the crocs factories to the customers distribution center the customer would then ship it to the appropriate retail store the crocs supply chain model was able to support the company's explosive growth enabling the company to ride the wave of customer enthusiasm for its products for instance snyder described a new flip flop sandal that was introduced in 2006 this was crocs first product in this segment and the company did not know how many would be purchased since it was unique and extremely comfortable they decided to make 250000 pairs which is far more than they had pre-booked orders for early in the selling season there were indications that the new flip flop was going to be even more popular than they expected so crocs made sure that it had excess of injection molding machine capacity and molds available with them it continued to get orders and build more products to meet the new orders by the end of the se- season they had shipped nearly 2.5 million pairs which is almost more than 10 times what they would have shipped if they had operated under the traditional model of supply chain the primary requirement for adding capacity was having enough injection molding machines and having enough molds for the desired product 
Crocs purchased molding machines from two primary suppliers who could initially deliver new machines in about three months. However, as the supplier observed Crocs rapid growth, they managed to have new machines available within six weeks. Crocs would move equipment from one location to another in order to meet its production needs. Molding machines were not transferred often, but when they were transferred, the company tried to have machines from just one vendor at each site. Molds, however, were frequently transferred between production locations. Say, if they needed fast response to meet a growing demand in the US, they might move production to Mexico, which was closer to the customer. For products with lots of pre-booked orders, a relatively dependable forecast and high volume, production might be shifted to China then. In its first few years of sales, Crocs observed that all products sold equally well in each market around the world. This provided an attractive opportunity. A new shoe model could be tested in the spring or summer season in the Southern Hemisphere and the results could be used to indicate how it might be accepted in US and Europe. If the product was huge hit, production could be planned accordingly for the Northern Hemisphere launch. On the other hand, if the product sold slowly, those not bought in the Southern Hemisphere could be sold in the Northern Hemisphere for its spring or summer season. Thank you everyone for watching this video. See you soon with another interesting case study. For more such case studies, please visit and subscribe 5 Minutes Learning Channel in YouTube.